Hi uh, folks, welcome back to Dolls Garage. Now, just very quickly, um, I want to do a, a, a quick video today in response to three independent requests that I've had from some of the new riders. Now, I've said this a few times before, we get a lot of new riders, new first-time riders, to, they're testing the summer. This is their first season on the road. They're watching the videos, they're watching Dolls Garage and the channel, and we're, we're picking up some of the how-tos and things. Um, we're getting some feedback. Now, so, some of that feedback in the last few days has been about what do I wear? These are the questions we're getting. What do I wear in the winter to keep warm? Which signifies these blokes are planning to ride through the winter, which is good, it's very noble, and it will make you a better rider in the spring because you're used to riding in the bad weather and the cold and so on. Um, so I just want to give a, a few tips, a few pointers, um, and a basic principle. What people have asked is, what do I wear? There's no point in me telling you that because what I wear won't necessarily work for you. It isn't what you wear, it's how you wear it, and that will become clear in a minute. Uh, a very simple, straight, Rule of thumb, I think, is the right term to use, that you must apply to everything that you wear. Every time you dress yourself to go out for a ride on your bike, whether it's a three-mile ride to work or a 300-mile trip around Switzerland touring in the snow, it doesn't matter. This rule of thumb will serve you extremely well in every situation. And it's simply something that we can refer to as a warm air jacket. Look at it that way. So stick around. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so a warm air jacket, what is it? It's uh, the human body uses a process of thermoregulation. It regulates its temperature. When it's nice and warm, it sheds that heat out because it continues to produce it. And when it's cold, it will retract the heat into the core of the body to protect the organs, brain, and so on. That means your hands will get cold. So when it's chilly out there, first thing to get cold is your ears and your fingers. And we all know that already. So I'm going to teach you to suck eggs. It's how to keep those things warm, to keep that warm air around your fingers and around your body so that you don't start to get cold. Body temperature should be 35 to 37 degrees roughly. Once it gets to 35, you start entering into the world of hypothermia. Once it gets down as low as 30, which it can. And this is the process when you're riding along, you've got a 20 mile ride, you're 15 miles in, you're absolutely perishing cold, your body's gone tense, you're holding everything stiff because you're so freezing cold, you can't feel your hands anymore. You must pay attention to that because you're in trouble. I mean it you've entered severe hypothermia once you get down to 28 degrees in your core temperature. You will lose concentration, your mental confusion sets in, you don't know what you're doing, you'll make a mistake, and you're fucked. You will fall off. Simple as that. And you don't need to. Just take some simple precautions. Start wrapping that warm air in. So what I'm talking about is insulating yourself. A warm air layer. Your grandma probably taught you this already. It's the same on a motorbike. You just need to make it waterproof as well because obviously it rains and mobile we can all dress up like Shrek big fat lump thing with 15 jackets on you can't move on a motorbike you have to be mobile you have to be able to move turn your head both sides so you can see your peripheral vision and your fingers have to move for the buttons so we need gloves that have got a space around your fingers so I'm going to show you mine all these are is a simple pair of cheap gloves uh, well they weren't they're about 80 pounds uh, from a bike shop and the thing is with these, they're different to my summer gloves, that inside my fingers move like that, inside the, the glove fingers. So that keeps that warm air layer. And if I keep my hand in that shape, I can kind of feel space all around my fingers. So when you try your gloves on and you buy your gloves, buy gloves that are not tight anywhere. They're not tight across here, because when you make a fist round the bar, you don't want anything getting tight because as soon as it gets tight, instead of being a nice warm air jacket, it forms a wick. And that goes the same for your clothing. You can go and buy yourself half a dozen t-shirts. Now imagine if your size is medium, get a medium, a large and an extra large and put them on in that order. Then they'll all fit each other. And you'll end up a little bit bulky, but you'll have a nice warm air layer. Then pop a jumper on and then a jacket, but not your normal jacket. Not the jacket that's nice and tight that you normally wear with one t-shirt underneath. You need to go and perhaps buy one for the winter. Go to your local bike shop, bike clothing emporium, and have a look at some of their clothing. Wear a big fleece or a big jumper and go out shopping in that clothing. And try on a jacket that's bigger than you would normally wear. Waterproof, breathable, windproof, so that that can't get through. And it must be big enough to build up that air layer. So there's your rule of thumb that I was talking about. Building up a warm air layer underneath your clothing. Same thing goes when you buy trousers. If you're gonna buy trousers, you're gonna sit on your bike, you're going to tuck your foot into your foot peg if you've got rear foot pegs. 
and as you tuck it in, it goes tight over your knee. That's no good. You need something that doesn't get too tight. Because if it's tight over your kneecap like that, it's not going to form a warm, a warm air layer at all. It's actually going to go hard against your knee and you've got a wick that takes the cold air straight to your skin. That's the rule of thumb you need to be thinking about. Keep that warm air. I'm going to show you about bar muffs. Bar muffs are these. I'm going to show you them working on the bike. Right now, as hypothermia starts with the body sucking heat away from the extremities back to the core to preserve that core temperature, that's your early indicator. It's your hands getting cold that is the first thing to go. So keeping your hands warm, obviously, is going to prevent that hypothermia kicking in. Your body will stay warmer if your hands are warm. It kind of follows, obviously. So paying extra attention to keeping your hands warm and the other extremities, that's going to be the key to keeping warm overall. And if you've never seen these before, I'm sure you have, uh, but for you guys who ride in hot countries, you may never have seen them before. All it is is a bar muff. It's a little weather muff that fits like that over the bar. Come on over, Pen. Right, so as you can see, over the bar, inside there, you see there's all your switches, so you can still get to them, and you can still pull the lever and so on. But it's fleece lined, it straps round. Right, now I, if I was going to endorse any product in the winter, it'd be bar muffs. If you want to go a stage further, you can buy yourself some heated grips. Now heated grips can come from anything like 50 pounds for a pair, uh, right up to 100 if you want regulated ones with a thermostat on. But you don't have to be too posh. Heated grip is just a rubber grip like that with little heat elements inside it and it wires into the bike. I'm not going to sell those to you, but they do work as well. Put a heated grip with a bar muff over the top then you can just wear a thin glove inside that. And remember, there's the other side of it, is, is dexterity. Your fingers don't work when they're very cold. You know what that's like, you've had freezing cold fingers, they kind of get a bit slow, don't they? So imagine an emergency situation, you need to grab a handful of brakes quick, they don't work very quick. That can and be dangerous. The bar muffs are usually waterproof as well, and these ones cost me just 10 pounds. You can spend 50 pounds on a pair, totally up to you. They've got kind of a metal opening that kind of stays where you put it. Um, and when you're off the bike, what I do with mine, Simply, when you're off the bike, close them up like that and shut them down and the rain just runs off so they don't get full of rain because nothing worse coming back to that's full of water. So that's it. Keep the biggest attention that you pay to your hands because your hands getting cold is the first step, if you like, in a row of events that will lead to you getting freezing cold in the core. Break your trip. If you're going on a long trip, plan stops where you can warm back up again. Ride slower. If the air rushing past you is a slower air, it's not going to cause that effect so much of heat exchange and tearing that warm air jacket away from you. Riding at 70 miles an hour, you're far likely to get cold quicker than riding at 40 miles an hour. And of course it's safer. Plan more time for your trip. Leave earlier. Get dressed indoors and keep all your gear on, including your gloves, before you walk out the door to get your bike. So get your bike out first and then go indoors, get dressed and get yourself warm before you go out to your bike. Because if you start the trip warm, you'll retain that warmth. If you're cold when you put your gloves on, it's a one-way street. They're never going to get warm. They're only going to stay cold. So think about it, okay? That's what it's about, this whole process of riding through the winter. Think, get a bit more time, plan your trip, plan a route which hasn't got such a long straight road. Stick to side roads where you're working, you're moving the bike around. The more you've got to do, the busier you are on your bike, the warmer you'll stay. Straight long roads you tend to fall asleep and there's another issue. If you feel yourself riding along in the winter, getting colder, you feel that shivering setting in, you feel your body start to get tense, that's the danger zone. Those are the danger signs. Pay attention to them. Wake up. Wake yourself up. Pull over. Even if it's in a place you wouldn't stop, pull over. Get off the bike. Walk round it three times. Get back on it and pull away. You'll notice you'll be instantly more alert for just doing that. Or better still get in a service station, get coffee. Simple as that and pay attention also to other road users around you because as much as you're doing your best to stay alert, they may not be. All right? So that's all it was really. These guys are asking what I ride, what I wear in winter. No point in me telling you wear jacket A, jacket B or trousers C. It doesn't really work. All I would suggest is pay attention to keeping that warm air layer trapped under some proper clothing that isn't too tight. If it's too tight, it's useless. It won't work. Okay? So it's a set of principles to keep him warm not telling you what jacket to wear. That's what it was. Let's all get through the winter, nice and safe. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. Right safe, see you next time.